Polystyrene foam is mostly inert and therefore is very resistant to decomposition. It is not generally recyclable. It pollutes the environment and is eaten by marine organisms to their detriment. A 2009 study found that polystyrene degraded in the ocean and left behind toxic chemicals such as bisphenol A, more commonly known as BPA, and styrene trimer. BPA interferes with animal reproductive systems and styrene trimer is a sus suspected carcinogen. We shouldn't be putting BPA or styrene trimer in our landfills or polluting our oceans with them. Polystyrene, better known as styrofoam, can be replaced with much more enviro-friendly material. There's a lot of alternatives to foam. There's paper. Paper's pretty easy. Paper. There's things that we make that are fiber. There's the clear plastics that are reusable. There's, um, yeah, I'll just stop there for the moment, but uh, the paper boats that you saw. Durability, uh, a lot of folks will say that, well, they leak. Um, they all leak, by the way. Um, it's got liquid in it, it's probably gonna leak. Uh, uh, what it won't do is it won't melt. Your french fry won't be stuck in the side of it. Um, I suppose I'm one of those yoga people that want us to live like hobbits, but I feel it's much more sir. preferable to look, feel like hobbits and live like hobbits than it is to live like orcs, personally. Can, can you give us your name, though? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Daniel. Okay. I'm from South Kona. I'm here to provide a testimony both as a consumer and also someone within the restaurant industry. Let's see. I heard a figure earlier today that a styrofoam container, your average one, costs around 15 cents to the restaurant person. This would take me maybe 10 seconds if I'm going very, very slowly to wash. So every 10 seconds I invest, I'm saving the restaurant 15 cents. On an hourly basis, that is $54 an hour. And if anyone wants to hire me at $54 an hour to um, scrub your dishes, I am more than willing. I made some soup last night. It was a delicious soup, chicken soup, with lots of vegetables and herbs. I loved that soup. I, I had extra. So I put it in one a container just like this, leftovers. I'm going to have some today and some tomorrow. Now, I could take this to a restaurant, and I could put my leftover chicken or potatoes or whatever in this. 500 styrofoam containers of this size cost 15 cents. The recyclable ones cost a nickel more. This is the nickel. Got a handsome man on it, bald like me. Very handsome man. Anyway, this is what you save. Is my earth is worth more than a nickel. Thank you. You know, I do understand Dexter and Joy Gold and them. I think that let's give them, you know, some kind of grant or subsidy and help people who transition, who started out doing what they thought was right when it was right, and then we find out whether it's DDT or foam that it's not, that we also help those. I have a lot of varied customers from the yoga quinoa type to the cheap eats type, and Every one of them are thankful that we serve our coffee and our food in compostable products. And I really urge you to move forward in a new direction and to make changes. Change is not easy, particularly for family businesses that have been running for so many years. And we will find a new way to support everybody. This is a compostable container that I brought today. Um, it, it works to me just as well as a styrofoam one. I've been using these. Um, I like to only go to restaurants that uh, serve in this. Um, and I've uh, actually been in the restaurant business for over 10 years as a manager, as an, an employee. And uh, the most efficient, best, profitable thing for a restaurant is takeout, carryout. That's where they make their most money. They don't have to hire the labor staff to have waiters in there that's where they make their most money so for restaurants to argue that hey we can't afford the five cents on a, when they're making the most money on sending food out the door to me that's it's not it's it's a little bit ridiculous the big island of hawaii is a in a position to lead by example seattle has already shown 
that they can go without styro styrofoam. They have been doing such since July of 2010. When Hawaii acted on the plastic bag ban, I noticed a seemingly easy transition. This could be a similar one. If the bill passes, restaurants will be required to use alternative materials when distributing takeout containers. As a customer, I favor places who are already using compostable packaging. I often avoid places I know who serve styrofoam. With everything that's happening on the federal level with the new administration, um, there are a lot of measures being repealed that were put in place to protect our environment. And I think it's especially important these days for us to speak up on a state level and say that we do care about our environment. Number one, EPS is not necessary. There's many alternatives, like Holly stated. Uh, the business at which I manage also made the switch. We actually saved money because we don't have to use as many types of cups in one cup. Um, our customers are also pleased that they spend their dollars with a business that considers its own ecological footprint. Um, number two, EPS is toxic to humans and to marine life. Interesting fact, uh, the MSDS sheet for EPS foam from uh, Styrofoam Inc. Uh, says that EPS begins to melt at 175 degrees. So. If food is hot enough that you have to blow on it before you put it into your mouth, it's probably around 180 or 185 degrees. Um, styrene is a known human carcinogen. So after we've eaten it, we dispose of it, even if I put it in a trash can, it can break apart. Again, you've heard about the albatross and the fish that end up ingesting it. Um, number three, marine debris control is necessary. Um, last year, the trash on our beaches, and although it's not always locally generated, it made national headlines, and I find that very scary as someone whose job um, relies on people coming to visit and enjoy our natural resources. Um, a massive portion of our local economy depends on the health of our oceans. Um, so please take that into consideration. Many of us remain gainfully employed uh, via the tourism industry and, and rely on the cleanliness of our cleanliness and management of our natural resources. Um, we cannot continue to contribute to the proliferation of waste here. Um, number four, the public has clearly spoken. Um, I think the yoga gentleman stated, um, why do you guys keep pushing this legislation? But it seems like the public is pushing this legislation from the testimony today. Um, last year, over 5,000 individuals signed my petition to ban polystyrene on the Big Island. Um, in 2011, a study in Honolulu found that 82% of respondents were in favor of an EPS ban. Um, and even if Bill 13 was implemented tomorrow, it would still stand almost 30 years behind the first EPS legislation in the country. Um, and last and most importantly, I hope you agree with me on this, that again, these islands are worth it. Um, we live in a place with um, countless endemic and endangered species, miles of untouched coastline, world-class coral reef, um, and above all, a place with a very deep cultural history of respect for the land, and I think that we should honor that without exception. I recently ate there and um, was served, and the, the omelet was thrown in there, and it's melted plastic, and I'm sitting there cutting into it, and I'm thinking this is toxic. This is the alternative which Island Naturals and other places that I also eat, and this is what I'd like to see that, that positive change happen, just because one's a blessing and one's a curse. And um, we have, we're in the, the age of information. We have the technology. My name is Megan Lampson, and I'm a marine biologist with Hawaii Wildlife Fund, and I was also a member of the Packaging Sustainability Task Force last year. So welcome to the four new council members, and mahalo for another opportunity to work with each of you to promote initiatives such as Bill 13 that would reduce the usage of single-use plastics on our island. So we, Hawaii Wildlife Fund, are supporting this bill to reduce polystyrene foam food containers for three main reasons. One, science documenting danger to our health, environment, and marine life. Two, economic nearsightedness. And three, strong community support coupled with common sense. So first off, the science. We've already talked about polystyrene and the adverse health effects in previous testimonies, so I'll leave that. It's all in my written testimony. But to repeat, polystyrene does not biodegrade, and it will last in our landfills indefinitely. 
despite their intended design to be used for less than an hour. So the second reason, economics. Most of the arguments against banning foam products are thinking in a very linear fashion, very straightforward. A two, to, two penny to 25 cent difference cost in a foam alternative product is just the bottom line to vendors. We really need to think about the end life of these products in our landfills, along our roads, and eventually in our oceans. Foam food containers are costing taxpayers millions of dollars in hidden cleanup costs. So the Hilo landfill we know is nearly full to exploding and they've been threatening to close it down for years. As such, an example, the county commissioned a pilot study to determine if it was more cost efficient to ship our, or haul our waste from East Hawaii to West Hawaii. The results from the study found it would cost $50 a ton or a little more than $3 million annually to haul our, our trash across the island. So the true cost of extra foam in our landfills is much more than the negligible difference between the prices of compostable and foam food containers. In addition, the Hawaii State Department of Transportation produced a trash reduction plan last year and it showed that styrofoam was one of the top contributors in the waste stream along our highways. And they even suggested a styrofoam ban ordinance in their long-term plan. Last but not least, we support Bill 13 because of strong community support and simple common sense. We've mentioned that we've now got a list of 137 restaurants and vendors on Hawaii Island who've already opted out of foam. Restaurants including mom and pop shops. Even Suisun Fish Market has made the switch. That's fabulous. Um, two statewide foam bills are being heard during this legislative session. And we've had over 600 testimonies and support received by the state capital for these initiatives. We live on an island and we shouldn't be importing or creating things that we cannot dispose of properly. As far as I'm aware, we can only recycle number one, number two, and number five plastics, um, and some number fours. Polystyrene is number six, and there's no viable recycling means. So in conclusion, we, we have the choice to lead or follow in this move towards sustainability and ecosystem health, and I urge you to choose the former option and to move this bill through committee as well as through uh, the full county council hearings. Thank you. Thank you.